Hi there. Now in this last part of the question, what we've got to do is calculate the difference in the momentum of P for the two occasions when it is at A. Now you can see what I've got here is just basically the situation as we see it now. Remember in the previous part we showed that the particle P moved up the plane a distance of 1.503 and so on meters when it came to instantaneous rest. Now what I've done then is just given you the basics of the diagram at this stage. So don't forget as well that the contact force R is 2.7718 and so on newtons. Now if you'd like to just carry on with this question I'll give you a moment to pause the video when you're ready, you can come back and check your method and solution against mine. OK, welcome back then, if you had a go. Well, what we've got to do then, if we've got to calculate the difference in momentum of P when it gets back to A, is we've got the momentum essentially when it starts. It's going to be its mass times its velocity here. But we need to get the speed that it returns back, passing through A again. So I'll call that V. Okay, It's going to pass through here again with the speed of V. And that would seem to suggest that we're going to need to apply one of the constant acceleration formulae, the SUVAT ones. Okay, But to do that, we're going to need to work out the acceleration as the particle comes back down the inclined plane here, which I'll call A meters per second per second. In fact, this value of the acceleration is going to be exactly the same value that we had in the very first part, part one of the question. If you're unsure of that, you can always go back to have a look at that part. I'll quickly run through and get A for you now, just in case though you want just a quick breakdown of it. To do that, remember you need to put your forces acting on the particle. It's moving down the plane, so you've got friction acting in the opposite direction. It's going to be mu r, the coefficient of friction times r, because it's limiting. So that's going to be the coefficient of friction, which is 0.2, and it'll be multiplied by r, and that will be measured in newtons. OK, so we need to get A, first of all. And we can do that by resolving down the plane. Remember, our particle is actually now just on the way back down. So we'll just change that round, that arrow, so it's just on the way back down. So resolving then down the plane, let's see what we get. Remember, I did do this, as I say, in part one. It'll only take me a few moments, so uh, we'll just run through it quickly. We've got the component of the weight acting down the plane. If we split those that weight into two components, remember the one down the plane is 0.4g sine 45 degrees. So that's going to be 0.4g. We'll take g as 9.8 when we do the sum. Sine of 45 degrees. And then we've got the frictional force acting up the plane, so it's in the opposite sense to this, so it's going to be minus 0.2 times the value of R, which was 2.7718, and so on. Okay, And this is the resultant force down the plane. Both R and this component of the weight have no effect because they're perpendicular to the direction we're resolving in. So I'll just remove those components. So with our resultant force, this is now equal to the mass times the acceleration. So it's going to be the mass 0.4 times the acceleration A. And if you work out the left-hand side of this, you end up with 2.2174 and so on. Okay, And that equals 0.4 A. And if we divide both sides now, by 0.4, it follows that A equals, and if you do that on your calculator, you get 5.5437, and so on, OK? Meters per second per second. So now we've got A, 
we're in a position to try and find out v by applying one of the constant acceleration formulae based on s, u, v, a and t, the time. S is the displacement, u initial velocity, v final velocity, a acceleration, t for time then. But we need to set up a positive sense and that positive sense will be down the plane because it's moving from here down the plane. So S the displacement is 1.503 and so on. U the initial velocity, well that was zero. V is what we're trying to find so we can calculate the momentum. The acceleration, well that's up here, that was 5.5437 and so on. T, we're not interested in the time so we can leave that out. So we just need an equation connecting these variables and the one is going to be is going to be v squared equals u squared plus 2as. So if we square root both sides we can get that value for v. v is going to be the square root then of all of u squared. u is 0 so that's going to be 0. We'll leave that out. Then we've got 2 multiplied by a 5.5437 and so on multiplied by s which is 1.503 and so on. And if we work this out you'll find you get 4.082 and so on meters per second. So we've now got our final velocity. So we're in a position now to work out, I'll put therefore, the difference in the momentum at A. So we'll just introduce this difference in momentum at A. And momentum is equal to the mass times the velocity. Well the momentum initially is greater than the final momentum so we'll start with the initial momentum which will be the mass 0.4 multiplied by the initial velocity which is 5 and then from this we subtract the momentum as it passes back down here. That will be the mass 0.4 times the V which is 4.082 and so on. And working this out, it comes to 0 0.3670 and so on. And if we give this to three significant figures, you get 0 0.367. The units will be kilogram meter per second. And that's given to three significant figures, 3SF for short. Okay.